So today we will continue with the uh, canal canal. So in the last class we were discussing about uh, anorectal abscess. Therein I have told you that uh, it's more common in men and it is due to interspentric anal glands infection. So that infection as it opens at the crypts of Morgagni, it may be blocked and uh, there is infection which can uh, track down into the perianal space as in this diagram you can see. So this is the area where it can get infected glands and then usually it will track like this into the <coughs> perianal space. This is the commonest presentation. Of course, it can also track into the ischiorectal fossa, which is large uh, space. So, and also it is prevented to protrude outside by this uh, fascia so that any pus accumulation the patient may not be able to localize but he will have severe constitutional symptoms so that is the difference between perianal abscess which the patient himself notices whereas ischiorectal abscess, he will complain of pain in the rectum and fever, right? Of course, there are other places like uh, supralevator, submucus, and uh, marginal, and within the interspentric space also, it can present, right? So, what are the other uh, precipitating factors are diabetes, low immunity, particularly in AIDS, <clears throat> other comorbid conditions like Crohn's and neoplasm. So, the patient will complain of throbbing pain and there is palpable indurated heart mass and uh, you have to examine under anesthesia for uh, better results. So, perianal, as I told you, is commonest, 60%, whereas ischiorectal is 30%. Both of them are at the point of maximum tenderness and uh, most fluctual point. Usually, fluctuation is uncommon in these unless it is too superficial fluctuation is uh, you should not wait particularly ischiorectal abscess should not wait for uh, fluctuation can you tell me a few places where you should not wait for uh, fluctuation for draining an abscess other places Yeah, 4 1 breast abscess, good. If it is not resolved within 48 hours, breast abscess, you are supposed to drain it. Of course, nowadays the draining is may not be by a giving incision, it is now being aspirated, breast abscess, particularly. Any other? So, here what did I tell you, this is uh, because this is prevented by tough fascia. So, similar situation, no, not appendicitis. So, similar situation where you 
don't wait for fluctuation to develop. Just like this here, how fascia is preventing. So where else fascia prevents an abscess? So two situations that are there is one is palmar abscess, palmar. And then palmar space abscess. And there is parotid abscess. So where the parotid is uh, enveloped by thick parotid fascia, like this. So, this is the parotid gland, like this, in the, just uh, in front of the ear lobule, this is the mandible like this. So, it is enveloped by thick fascia. Though there is abscess, this fascia, it cannot penetrate the uh, fascia. So, different situations. One is parotid abscess. Then palmar space abscess. Then breast abscess, ischiorectal. So these are few situations where you are not supposed to wait. Okay. After 48 hours, if there is uh, no relief after your IV antibiotic even, then you have to drain them, right? So this is how we have to give cruciate incision and then remove the skin. So that is called as de-roofing. So this is the appearance. So that there is chance for drainage, complete drainage of the pus. Now fistula. So same pathology. The pus that is tracking down will open after breaking the skin. So that will become fistula. An abscess that breaks the skin will be is called as fistula because there is internal communication that is uh, the crypts uh, of morgagni and external opening so what is fistula it's a chronic abnormal communication lined by granulation tissue in some extent to some extent not completely otherwise uh, if it is completely then uh, you cannot call it fistula then it will become sinus. Of course, sinus will not have uh, two openings, only one opening, another will be blind. So, runs outwards from anorectal lumen, that is internal opening to external opening. So, this is also same cryptoglandular infection that is tracking down. Here also you have to think of Crohn's disease, tuberculosis, very, very important. All the fistulotomy, whenever you do, you have to send a bit for biopsy. 
to rule out Crohn's, tuberculosis, LGV, and other things. So this is also common in men. And uh, classification is there are four types. This is the commonest type that is interspintric. Interspintric. Whereas the second one is the transspintric. These two are common fistulae in anno. So transpinctric is traversing the entire uh, sphincters, both internal and external. Whereas this interspinctric will traverse only internal sphincter. That's the difference. There are other things that is, this is the supraspinctric that is above the anorectal ring. It will open into the rectum rather almost. Then you have extra sphincteric that is completely different uh, pathology, mainly the pelvic pathology will be there. So while supraspinctric is uh, physician induced usually. So these are the ones which you have to remember about good cells rule. So the position of internal opening according to the position of external opening. If you see external opening anterior to the, this line that bisects the anal canal into anterior half and posterior half. If the external opening is anterior, it is straight one. It will open on uh, directly into the uh, anal canal. Whereas the external opening that is posterior to this line will not open directly like this. It will go to the midline and then open into the midline. So that is good cells rule. And uh, so another thing is we should not probe an awake patient is dangerous also. So then you have to carry out full examination under anesthesia just like abscess. Of course for uh, diagnosis and extent of knowing the extent of the fistula gold standard is MRI, MR fistulogram. So this is the MR fistulogram wherein you can see the, there are two tracks. So the treatment is commonest mode is fistulotomy, opening the fistula. So this is how it is probed. This is external opening, this is internal opening. So you will probe it and then cut it. So that is the fistulotomy. Then you have fistulectomy also. So fistulectomy is you have to remove the coring out of the fistula. Then recently another one that has come is ligation of intersphincteric fistula tract, the so-called lift. So this lift, what they do is they will ligate here so that this internal opening is discommunicated with the fistula tract. So that this is ligated here and then this part is removed. So that is the so-called lift operation. Then you have staged fistulotomy where if it is the fistula is high like this then you can open up to here and then pass a thread here and that is called a seton. So it's two types of seton are there, already I told you. So one is loose seton, which is its main function is uh, gradually there will be 
the patient is prepared for uh, further surgery. Whereas cutting seton is the one wherein you need not do further surgery, where it is also called as uh, there is in Ayurvedic methods. The Char Sutra is there practiced in India from time immemorial. So there is no functional impairment here. Of course, there are other methods. That is one is advancement flap. Then uh, you have other glue-like agents also. So now today we will discuss something about other points. That is first thing is pruritus anae, one of the common embarrassing symptoms around the uh, anal canal. So here, because of scratching, what will happen is skin is reddened, cracked and moist. So regarding the causes of pruritus anae, there are five P's. Pruritus and five P's. Pus, first P. Second P is polyp. Third P is parasite. Fourth P is piles and a fifth is psych. So these are the common causes of pruritus anae. But mainly it is due to lack of cleanliness and hyperhidrosis that is called an excessive sweating. So there may be, unless in countries like India where you are not careful about the hygiene of the perianal region, for that matter, even genital region, the discharges from the genital region, particularly in females, can uh, go to the anal canal and then cause itching there. So, lack of cleanliness and excessive sweating are common causes. As I told you, there may be perianal or vaginal discharge, need not be pus, it can be simple discharge also. Then coming to parasites, thread worms, particularly in children, you can even see visible thread worms outside, which are hardly one centimeter, may not be also very narrow, thin uh, worms are there. Then of course, scabies and pediculosis can also infect that region and then cause pruritus. Then there are so many other different causes like allergy. Because there is mucocutaneous junction around anal canal, these allergies to drugs particularly can cause itching there. Then intertrigo between two folds, there may be infection. It is common in uh, inguinal region and uh, interdigital region, but it is it can be there around anal canal also. And diabetes sometimes is found by this itching. So if you investigate, you will be found to be having diabetes. Then already I told you about psychoneurotic conditions. Then skin lesions like uh, psoriasis, lichen planus, contact dermatitis, all these things can cause pruritus anae. So the causes are uh, many. So you have to exclude all these things before you dub the patient as psychoneurotic. Okay. So the treatment depends upon the cause. So if there is skin conditions, you have to treat the skin conditions. If there is allergy, you have to treat the allergy and then ask the patient to stop that offending agent. Intertrigo, cleanliness. Then diabetes should be controlled. Thread worms, you have to treat with albendazole. Scabies, of course, this solution. Then pediculosis also, same. You have to use these antiparasitic solutions that are so many are available. So mainly, suppose there is any vaginitis, 
particularly this uh, candidiasis and all they have to be treated so hygiene measures usually we advise them to not to use soap because that may be the offending agent cotton wear is very very important particularly in countries like india cotton wear will uh, absorb the sweat and then will be soothing then uh, other lotions like calamine lotion hydrocort steroids even and sometimes even lignocaine also and extreme cases what they do is they will separate the buttocks by strapping so this is extreme end so mainly you have to remember the mnemonic that five p's pus polyp parasite piles and site and depending upon the cause you have to treat the cause okay then another condition is anal stenosis so it may be due to so many causes and frequently it is post operative after excising piles so post op of all the post op conditions it is hemorrhoidectomy that is causing 90% of post op stenosis so why i told you already in uh, while i was talking about piles so what is important in piles is this is very very important between two pile masses excised pile masses there should be tongue of the skin like this otherwise they will coalesce and then get contracted because of healing by fibrosis so that will naturally result in stenosis so you have to keep a tongue of skin between two pile masses excision then of course for any condition there like carcinoma of the rectum or anal canal if you irradiate it is naturally going to be stenotic then peculiarly in old people also there may be stenosis because of the sphincter contraction okay then std lgb lymphogranuloma venereum here the peculiarity is tubular it is not circular or annular like other conditions it is tubular lgb very important whenever you find tubular structure you have to think of either lgb or malignancy already i have shown you in malignancy how tubular stenosis can occur then inflammatory bowel disease particularly crohn's it is annular and it may be more than one like just like the structure of the intestines there is structure of the anal canal in females there may be endometriosis that is the cause for stenosis and last but not the least and most important you have to exclude is neoplastic stenosis so these are all the conditions of anal stenosis of which you have to remember mainly post operative because hemorrhoidectomy is very common surgery which we do right and others are all infective stenosis inflammatory and neoplastic neoplastic you should never forget so how will be the clinical features there is increasing difficulty for defecation because the narrowness is causing difficulty and stools are so called pipe stem this pipe stem may be there in other conditions particularly inflammatory bowel disease also there may be pipe stem stools then if you feel there is a sharp shelf like interruption of the lumen because it is mainly concentric or annular it is sharp shelf like unless in lgv where it is tubular 
so you have to take biopsy very very important and uh, dilatation is one option but uh, mainly first thing is treat the cars so if it is due to lgv if it is due to ibd you have to treat them it is neoplasm treat it whereas post operative what you can do is you can advise the patient anal dilatation so anal dilator anal dilator you can ask the patient to procure and then apply xylacan and graded anal dilatation so the dilators will be like this conical dilators So the dilators are like this. So like this conical dilators, of course, from uh, not this much broad, but uh, I have drawn like that. So there may be narrow dilators. So like this gradually there is so the it will not be this much sharp of course so conical dilators are there these conical dilators will uh, be introduced by after lubrication with uh, gelatin and then the patient can himself do it so anal dilatation by the patient of course if it is severe then you can do what is called as anoplasty and sometimes the anal stenosis may cause intestinal obstruction then you have no other go but to do colostomy same is the case in the fish line ano also so sometimes in rare cases you may have to excise this and then produce coloanal anastomosis to the anal verge you can anastomose but this is, you can forget but mainly two things you have to remember is one is anal dilatation another is uh, this uh, anoplasty so what is this anoplasty so this is called as yv anoplasty yv advancement plan so how we do is first we give an incision of y and also around the anal canal you have to give incision like this and then open it and then uh, what you do is bring this to here so that the width of the anal canal is increased like this so this is yv advancement flap anoplasty this yv you might have or vy plasty is also there for hydronephrosis okay so this is the method of anoplasty so that's about anal stenosis then you have another condition uh, that is uh, fairly common in uh, sexually promiscuous individuals that is condylomata acuminata so this is caused by HPV, human papilloma virus. There is another variety of condylomata that is also sexually transmitted. What is it? What is that condylomata? Of course, it is not common in uh, anal canal, but it can occur 
yeah syphilis one not two you are correct so condylometa lata so don't we should not get confused with the condylometa lata that is seen in syphilis of course nowadays it is less common compared to acuminata which is caused by viral it is otherwise called as viral wart so this is the most common std seen by colorectal surgeon so common condylometa acuminata so the warts may also be present in the external genitalia also particularly common in females and uh, it's also associated with hiv so what are the subtypes 16 18 31 33 these are the ones which are uh, commonly accused for condylometa so what is the problem if there are infections no problem but uh, they will progress to dysplasia intraepithelial neoplasia and even malignancy squamous cell carcinoma so condylometa are usually asymptomatic but they may cause pruritus discharge bleeding and pain any anal condition if you remember all these things that is pruritus discharge bleeding and pain you can write for any anal condition okay so these are pinkish white warts they will enlarge and then they will coalesce forming giant condylometa so previously we used to call it as uh, buschke levenstein tumor so giant condylometa also called as buschke levenstein just one minute eh? क्लास मैं फोन मैं सो दट इज दफ्कोर्स दि काम टेस्ट विच वी डूज विसीड इट विल बिकम वैट एंड बट इन यू हेव टू टेक विट फॉर एंड प्रूव दट इट इज नाट मैलिग्नेट आर it is associated with uh, all these things dysplasia or intraepithelial neoplasia so the treatment is mainly conservative with podophyllin but sometimes if they are jaint they may need surgical excision okay so these are the condylometa acuminata around the anal canal but they may be very big sometimes forming giant condylometa acuminata then anal intraepithelial neoplasia ail so just now i was talking about intraepithelial neoplasia the chief cause mainly about 70% of the anal intraepithelial neoplasia are due to hpv it is hpv induced dysplasia so previously we used to call it as bowen's disease but nowadays it is called as intraepithelial neoplasia so it may be perianal or even intraanal so the subtypes here you have seen it is 6 and 11 mainly of course 16 18 also so in the earlier condition we said 16 18 31 33 whereas here it is 6 11 16 18 18 so this is also more commonly associated with hiv and immunocompromised status it is further divided into ain 1 2 3 depending upon the lack of keratocytes and uh, keratocyte maturation and extension of the proliferation further 
So that means AIN3 is almost going for malignancy, whereas one is still dysplasia. So this can also be asymptomatic. This can also cause pruritus, pain, bleeding, discharge. All these are the, peri the anal symptoms are common in all the conditions. So again, for this also, like uh, acuminata, condylometa, acuminata, you have to take a biopsy and then monitor for invasive. Just like uh, cervical cancer, where we monitor here also you have to monitor the condition and if it is going for malignancy you have to excise. So of course for lesions that are localized you can excise but it should be limited to 30% of the circumference of the anal canal. That is important. You cannot do it for this much extensive AIN. See this whole thing is involved. So uh, more than half of the circumference is involved. So for this, no surgery. Whereas for uh, lesions that are less than 30% of circumference of anal canal, you can do local excision and then skin grafting or advancement flap, something you can do. Of course, there are some uh, ointments like imiquimid, or uh, retinoids and then uh, anti-HPV drugs are there and uh, finally even vaccination is there. So in a nutshell, AIN is dysplasia caused by HPV, previously called as Bowen's disease. And these are the subtypes, 6, 11, 16, 18. They may be given in entrance exam, so you have to blindly remember them, that's all. So there are three grades depending upon the extension and maturation of keratocytes. And uh, you have to prove it by biopsy and then local treatment. So finally we'll go to malignant lesions of the anal canal. So anal canal carcinoma is rare and of all the large bubble carcinoma it is only less than 2%. That means so rare. So if whenever you see any growth around anal canal, first thing you have to think of is it may be an extension from rectal carcinoma, which is adenocarcinoma. Whereas this is mainly squamous cell carcinoma. That is the difference. The other day I was telling you that uh, both extremes, both uh, extremes of the GA tract prognosis poor. Whereas in between it is good. Actually the oral cavity, the esophagus and the anal canal, the prognosis is bad. Whereas for stomach, it is not bad. Whereas for small bubble, it is good. Whereas for rectum, large bubble and rectum, it is very good. Whereas for uh, again, anal canal, it is bad. So mainly it occurs below dentate line and it is squamous cell. Whereas above dentate line, it may be of so many varieties, let us not bother about this because this itself is very rare. So adenocarcinomas can also occur, but they are mainly extensions from the rectum. So other malignancies you have to think of is melanoma. Why you have to think of melanoma is the condition may be, the tumor may be so small but it may be associated with uh, massive liver enlargement. So this is one condition. Uh, I think you will, you might have remembered about the melanoma of the eye, particularly the uvea, where it can 
lead to massive liver enlargement. Here also same. So that's why you have to exclude melanoma of the anal canal whenever there is massive nodular enlargement of the liver, most probably secondary. If the ultrasonologist tells you that it is secondary liver enlargement, then you have to exclude melanoma. The tumor may be very small. Unless you do correct examination, you may miss it. Of course, there are lymphoma, sarcoma. Don't bother about all these things. Remember squamous cell carcinoma and melanoma. Of course, for all the anal conditions, you have to remember that it is associated with HPV, AIN, that is anal intraepithelial neoplasm immunosuppression. This is peculiarly common in females. And here also, same AIN uh, subtype 16, 18, 31, and 30. The symptom is mainly pain and bleed. And uh, there will be how to diagnose it by an indurated mass or ulcer. And because it is anal canal, unlike rectum, there will be inguinal nodes. So anal canal, inguinal nodes are enlarged. So you have to take a bit for biopsy always. You have to, whenever there is doubt, take a bit for biopsy. So for staging, MRI is best because intraluminal endoscopy and not endoscopy. Intraluminal coils can be kept and then MRI can be done. For other regions like lungs and chest, you have to go for CT. So the tumors, usually the treatment of choice is chemoradiotherapy for anal canals. Previously we used to excise, but nowadays treatment is chemoradiotherapy. But if it is small, you can do local excision. But usually by the time you see they are big, so treatment is chemoradiotherapy, chemotherapy with 5FU, mitomycin, cisplatin, either mitomycin or cisplatin. Combination therapy you have to give along with the radiotherapy. Results are not bad. Of course, sometimes you may have to do even abdominal perineal resection, that is AP resection. You may have to do if the disease is persistent or recurrent after your surgery, right? Sometimes you may have to do even defunctioning stoma because of the surgery in the anal canal, the patient can has pass stools and natural roots. So you may have to do defunctioning stoma also. Okay. So that is about carcinoma of the anal canal. What you have to remember, three points you have to remember is that it is squamous cell. It is caused by 16, 18, 31, 33 HPV. And uh, another condition you have to remember is melanoma. You have to think of inguinal lymph nodes, horizontal group. And uh, treatment is chemo radiotherapy. Right? So that's about today's class. So we have finished almost our. Uh, entire portion uh, but a uh, few short notes topics like uh, daycare surgery all those things are there which we will be gradually covering okay right if there are any doubts you can ask me So hope tomorrow seminar, people are getting ready. As I told you earlier, all of you should be prepared and ask questions. If you don't ask questions, I will select people and then make them ask questions. 
so all of you because it is and uh, you probably uh, might have seen uh, the batch recently they have conducted exam and the questions i will read out what are all we have prepared they are all now questions so they may not be some difficult questions are also there so for your benefit i will read out the question paper two papers so the first paper the questions are recently we have finished last week topic essay topic was essay so define and classify hemorrhage write in detail about blood transfusion same thing we have discussed then short notes one question which is uh, you it is difficult pet ct so that is difficult for you then day care surgery the topic i am going to take on friday day care surgery that was already given and local anesthetic agents so these are the three short notes questions for four marks two mark questions are also very difficult immuno histo chemistry complications of parenteral nutrition already we have covered this topic surgical site infection so that is another topic which we have to cover cold abscess neck that is the only topic which all of you can easily write of course the part b is orthopedics then uh, second paper this is the most uh, tough exam tough question even pgs may not write properly discuss the etiopathogenesis clinical features and management of parathyroid adenoma i don't know whether we have covered parathyroid or not if not covered inform me so that we will uh, <clears throat> cover that topic also but uh, of course there is no hard and fast rule that once given the next paper you won't get it but usually they don't give that question but anyhow if it is not covered please tell me so enumerate the causes for obstructive jaundice already we have discussed about this discuss the etiology clinical features and management of cholelithiasis this is the question i have given you in one of the essays uh, one of the assessment tests then short notes carcinoma of the penis deep vein thrombosis burgers disease valvulus already we have given this hydrocele femoral hernia so all these topics are covered i believe these are all four mark questions then two mark questions are sentinel pile so then already we have covered this radio active iodine uptake scan this is mainly for thyroid in thyroid they might have covered this pages disease so he is very vague here pages disease means there is pages disease of the breast and pages disease of the bones so are uh, the skin also is there so three varieties i don't know which he meant but if you can write but of course it is only for two marks if you can write for breast it is more than enough then management of pheochromocytoma i don't know whether it is covered or not please inform me then achalasia cardia we have covered it meckel's diverticulum we have covered splenectomy recently i have covered it torsion testis i believe is covered these are all two mark questions so we are almost uh, all the points which are uh, discussed you have to remember and then uh, prepare well for these questions so some unexpected questions may be there so please prepare for them that's why we are conducting the serial assessment so this saturday also you will have one uh, exam the portion covered till last friday will be the portion right okay 
थैंक यू